Good morning guys, we're back at it again with another video. I wanted to do a follow-up video to my last one, um, which you can check out in the cards up here, um, where I went over our entire rainwater harvesting system pretty quickly and how well it's done over the last year here in the Sonoran Desert. So one of the most common questions on that video was uh, people are curious about how we filter our rainwater. Now I just want to give you guys kind of like a base understanding is that rainwater is very pure, it's distilled, it just you know falls down from the sky it's very clean pure water and when you compare rainwater to well water or even city water uh, rainwater is it's very clean water just from the get-go so i want to try to alleviate some of your possible concerns about whether or not this water is going to be safe to drink uh, myself and hannah we've been drinking rainwater here for over the last year um, i know joe from homesteadonomics He's been living primarily on rainwater for the last seven years. And then off grid with Doug and Stacey, they've been living um, on rainwater. I don't know exactly how long, but I think probably at least six, maybe seven years again. We haven't keeled over dead yet. And uh, one thing that is really important is the quality of your water. So you can take pretty well any healthy individual. They can go without food for, you know, maybe 20, 30 or 40 days. You can only go without water for, I think like really two or even three days. So the importance of water and having clean, pure water for yourself and for your family, I think is of utmost importance. So we can look at instances like Flint, Michigan, you know, they don't necessarily have the best water. So I think it's very empowering to take control of your water as well as your own water quality. So after we start getting some of our big monsoon storms and these tanks get completely filled up, is what I'll do is I'll take just a small amount of bleach and I'll just put that in each of the tanks. And that is a very similar way that most cities and towns uh, purify their water. It's not obviously, they're not just throwing bleach in there, but they are putting certain chemicals in, in order to purify the water and to make it much safer for your consumption. I was just talking to Doug the other day and because they get so much rain throughout the year and their main collection tank gets, um, I guess it, because it gets replenished all the time and there's always new water coming in and the old water's going out, is that they don't add any bleach or they don't add anything to their water. And I think that is important to distinguish because the water in our tanks is gonna be sitting here for a long time. Um, it's like some of the water in our tanks has been here for over a year now. So just by adding a small amount of bleach, it's going to cut down on any bacteria growth or any nasties growing in there. It's the same thing that Joe does with his system and he lives just about an hour away from me. Now we use our first main collection tank almost as if it was our first flush. Um, but I think a good suggestion if you're going to be installing a rainwater harvesting system and maybe you don't have the, the mass amount of tanks that we have or you don't want to be adding bleach to the water is to make sure that you install a proper first flush so that if there is you know, any bird poo or any kind of contaminants that might be on the roof, um, they're going to be flushed away when you get that, uh, when you get the first, you know, five, ten minutes of rain. So the water from our collection tanks, it gets sucked up into the shallow well pump here, goes through the pressure tank, which uh, basically regulates the pressure. Our system here uh, goes between 30 psi and 50 psi. So when it gets down to 30 psi, the pump kicks on, pressurizes the water all the way up to 50. The water then goes through our water meter, and then if we follow the pipes here, comes up and goes through these whole house cartridges um, that I just bought on Amazon. So the brand name, so they're DuPont uh, water filters. After reading a lot of the reviews on Amazon, uh, these were a pretty low cost solution uh, for getting that initial filter for the water. So the first filter that the water goes through is just a universal whole house poly block cartridge that's in that um, housing right there. And then it goes through a, uh, a whole house carbon wrap here. Now these filters have a life of about 15,000 gallons, um, but they also recommend that you change them every three months or so. Since we're never gonna use 15,000 gallons over the course of three months, you know, I just change these out periodically. If I were to replumb this again, what I would do is I would put the meter after the filters, um, just in case there's any sediments or any gnarlies in the water, um, it could possibly clog the, uh, the meter. So that's how I would do it differently if I, if I were gonna do it. Um, and also if you're gonna be installing filters like this, I'd also make sure that you in install a bypass. 
So right now the water cannot go up and bypass the filters through here because the shut off, um, the valve is off. But you can see these other two shutoffs are currently on. So if I ever wanted to change out the filters, I'd just turn these shutoff valves to be closed, just like this. And then I'd just quickly release some of the pressure here. And these are really quite easy to, uh, to change the water, or to change the filter. So you just do this. We're pretty well at the point right now where we want to change these filters because I haven't done it in a while. So this is what the old filter looks like. This is a brand new filter. So yeah, these look like uh, they need to be changed. So it's just really easy. Just put the cartridge, the new cartridge in, screw it back on. So the difference between the old filter and the new filter, it's kind of, you can't really tell the difference, but we're gonna put the new one in. And there we go, that's how easy it is to uh, change out these filters. And these filters are pretty inexpensive, I believe they're less than $10 each. So all the water that goes to the shower, that goes to the sink, that even goes to the irrigation, that goes to the washing machine, all that water is pre-filtered using those cartridges that I just showed you. Any water that we use for cooking or for drinking, something that we're gonna be consuming, is it goes through the Berkey filter. So the Berkey filter is a gravity-fed filter. You stick the water in the top and then it comes out clean out of the bottom. We originally bought the Berkey filter when we were living in Tucson um, just because the water quality in Tucson is absolutely horrible. Just terrible stuff. The water, most of the water that comes into Tucson or that is used in Tucson comes from the Colorado River which is over 200 miles away and it's pumped up I think over a thousand feet in elevation up um, through open open air canals. So it's, they're not going through pipes or anything like that. So what happens is a lot of the water evaporates in those canals, leaving a lot of the heavy minerals and stuff in the water. And that's why the water, um, the water quality is so awful there. We bought it originally just mainly for convenience because we had to take um, like jugs of water and get them filled up at, at a reverse osmosis machine. So this was just easier just to have in the kitchen, have it sit on the counter. Um, you can look up all the stats on what the Berkey filter, um, what it actually filters out. So there's like a huge long list of things that it uh, basically cleans and purifies from the water, including like different types of bacteria, um, all kinds of stuff. Ken and I both feel confident with the, with the water quality from the Berkey. Um, what I would recommend if you are buying a Berkey, I forget what size this one is, but if you have more counter space, I'd recommend going with a bigger one. Um, also going with a bigger one of these Berkey filters, like even this size, you can fit four of the cartridges in there. And then they also have some other cartridges that you can, I think you stick them in underneath from below and they're white ones and they're specifically, I think for fluoride. Overall, it's been working out really good for us. Uh, somebody was wondering, like, wouldn't we want to enjoy a glass of like cold water? We just take the filtered water, we put it into a pitcher like this, and we leave it in the fridge. Um, I also put all of my water bottles, I fill them up, put them in the fridge so that I always have lots of cold water. Something else that people are curious about is how hot is the water, specifically in the summertime coming from the tanks. By the time that the water gets to the faucet or gets to the shower, it's typically at a pretty normal temperature. Um, but we do kind of experience times where, specifically in the afternoon, um, just because I didn't bury the, uh, the water pipes coming into the tiny house very deep, I think they're only about that far deep, um, is actually the water in the pipes does get, uh, it does get a little bit warm. Um, during the winter time, it's, it's, it's the opposite. So the water coming into the house, it gets, uh, it gets quite cold coming out of the faucet. If I were to rerun the plumbing coming into the house, is I would just bury it at least two feet or almost three feet down, just to ensure that the temperature in the water is gonna maintain um, a much more constant temperature. Since we've been living on rain and water for just about a year now, we haven't had any issues with the quality of the water. Um, the pets don't seem to have an issue with it. And I think there's a bit of a stigma around rainwater and it not necessarily being super clean or anything like that, but I would rather take control of the water that is going to be in our home and, in, and we're gonna be drinking. I'd rather take more control over that and have it be reliant on me to provide our family with fresh, clean water. Awesome guys, I hope that helps clear up any questions that you might have had about our rainwater harvesting system or filtering the water. Um, I will be speaking at the Homesetting Life Conference 
in uh, Hannibal, Missouri, August 12th to 13th, 2018. Gonna be a phenomenal event. I got a number of emails from some of you guys that want to meet up while well, I'm gonna be there in Hannibal. I'm more than happy to do that. Um, if we don't get to meet up one-on-one, -on -one, I'm gonna be there throughout the entire time, walking around, chatting, hanging out. Always feel free to come up, say hello, ask any questions. That's what I'm there for. Awesome, thanks so much for watching, guys. Catch you on the next video. Talk to you soon. Peace.